Hi, it's Barry Coombs from Define Tomorrow. I'm joined by uh, Jason Smith of Liquidware. This is great to be back with you on video this time. Indeed. So uh, Jason, I just recorded uh, a podcast that I highly recommend you go to iTunes or your favorite uh, podcast app, search for Define Tomorrow, and you should be able to find that uh, quite easily. Um, we're now going to jump in and do a few demos, or, or say we, I say Jason's going to do those. Um, so Jason, uh, we're looking at Profile Unity, and, and we've already got on screen here the management dashboard. Yeah, that, this alone will show you the power of our user environment management. So the name Profile Unity is a little bit of a misnomer because we go far beyond the profile. You'll start to see policy things in here that you can affect. And then the application layering management in here under Flex app. Uh, department installed applications, being able to snap those applications in from a layer um, is, is all in one management console. And that's an advantage here. You're not going to flip between different management consoles. For instance, now if you need to modify registry keys, you've got that you've got that functionality right here in this same management console. You see the icon for registry right here. And we can effectively, you know, a good point here to bring up, when we run anything, when we run uh, the Profile Unity agent, we lay down policies. We're laying them down with administrative privileges. Run with admin privileges. So you can leave your users standard users, and you can effectively change policies for that machine just like the administrator is sitting, sat down at the, and logged in. So HKLM keys. Now we can lock down USB and things like that, and a standard user can't undo those. Fantastic. Raise privileges or lower privileges, actually just raise privileges per process for a standard user with this privilege elevation um, functionality that we have in here. We name okay. off the executable or the SHA-1 hash, and all that's built in. So a lot well, of that's the problem faced quite a lot by uh, IT departments, IT users. You find that users end up being local admins just because um, they need that uh, layer of flexibility for the one or two applications. Uh, maybe there's an application that updates a lot, and it always requests they have uh, local admin pri privileges, so the user ends up being a local admin across the board. So with your product, you're able to select where that privilege is escalated. Right. And some of the UEM players and providers that we compete with in the market, they charge you an additional price for this. All this is included with us. And we do it on a very secure level too, all the way down to a SHA-1 hash. Mm -hmm. So if you raise the privileges of something, it's going to make sure that if you do it on that SHA-1 hash, the actual application and not child processes will be elevated. So um, big advantage there for the, the low price of the entire product. You get a lot of built-in functionality and power beyond user profiles. Fantastic. And uh, the actual, uh, we're obviously connected to an environment here. Is this, is Profile Unity installed on a Windows server in the back end? So that's the, that's a good, uh, good question. And let's show you the bit. So this is the management console that you would save off a configuration from. And so the way you want the environment to be managed, you see all these red numbers here. That mm -hmm. means there's a configuration that is at play under these things for folder redirection, for registry, for the launch applications, portability. We spoke about that in the podcast. That's a profile that is hived on 20 different rule sets. Think about that as file by file and registry by registry that turn uh, into compressed files, individual files that will be saved to the user's home drive. Or as we talked about on the podcast, we now support uh, object-based storage. So okay. to your Amazon S3 storage without an SMB, um, your profile is hived and saved out there. So that's an example of a couple of those things. Um, we've included all the hard work for you. So it looks intimidating, right? To look at this and go, where would I start? How do I know how to use this thing? You don't have to know how. Uh, what I used here to power the demo environment you'll see here in a moment for the desktop side, all this was more or less automated for us. Configuration management is the screen we want to go to here, and I want to show you how easy it was to come up with a configuration. You only need one. I've got several in here. This is a demonstration machine, but you only need one to power an environment. The agent looks to this configuration to know what to do, and uh, we spoke about that in the podcast too, so you want to listen to all that, but when you first install Profile Unity, it's a next, 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 and then you're done. You, you can literally do it in under an hour and have a proof of concept up and running. This web-based console is very powerful. You, you uh, at one point during the next, 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 when you install, it'll ask you to create a basic configuration, which I just showed you. Um, if, if later you want a different configuration and I can kick this off here, uh, go with a guided configuration. It's going to ask you what your environment looks like, right? So is it, is it an RDS type of environment? Is it windows seven, 10 and 2016? Cause we can make one profile go across. Uh, you choose the environment closest to what 
you're about to do, right? And look at this. We've even got this extra thing in here that's brand new, stored yeah. to object-based storage. We show Amazon uh, S3 in here because I had an earlier copy. What we're shipping tomorrow is 6.7.6. .6. Also supports Azure and Google. So that's the version that you'll be able to see when you download after you publish this. Mm -hmm. um, easy to get started. Then it's next, next. And we make sure out of the box you have um, – the configuration that we showed basically a robust profile, um, some folder redirection. I clicked on the wrong one, a robust profile, which would be here under portability settings, some folder redirection, which would put in best place, a be a place best practices, my documents, pictures, and things like that should be redirected. Um, not the profile, but user authored data and a few things that would tune to help us run even quicker in an environment. So it gets you off and running into the races. And if you choose in the guided configuration, a profile desk, you can also do that office 365 bit we spoke about today on, okay. the, on the podcast, but that's all automatically configured. You can change these things at any time. Um, and, and under the admin tab, you can add your profile desk, by the way, that's why it doesn't show up here. It's, it, it shows up under the admin tab to add a profile desk to an environment if you didn't do it up front. But, this essentially, you asked me about the parts of the infrastructure and what that looks like. These get saved back to the file share. So you download this configuration um, as an INI file back to the NetAugron file share. And that's when the user logs on, and you'll see this in the demo in a minute, it looks to this little INI file to know exactly what to do, do for that user. And then the other parts of this are just storage areas. And that could be um, SMB drives or as we've spoken about today, object-based storage to store the user profile. Fantastic. With that said, I'd like to show you the end user demo. Does that sound good? Yeah, it's all about end user experience at the end of the day. So if we're not making the user's life easier, then we're probably wasting our time. <laughs> right. Speaking about making lives easier, I've got a pre-recorded one that makes it even easier for me to not have to go back and forth between machines. I want to show you and level set this a bit too, to show you what you're looking at. You're looking at a windows seven machine uh, that we've logged on to and we'll show the windows 10 machine in a moment. That's part of the magic of this, but you'll be able to see me go between those two environments. So this user's logged into a windows seven machine. They have a profile disc already set up okay. and their user, their UEM features are going to come in because we're going to put a, a few bookmarks at play in here and then we'll, open up um, Outlook and we'll show how fast the performance is because that Office 365 bit comes in from there, from the uh, profile disk. Here we're just saving a few more settings, the personalization, and that would be the spell checker um, preferences in Foxit Reader PDF, for example. But sure. we've logged in, let me back up there. We're logging into uh, Office 365 and you see it's already populated by over 100,000 messages. This is my own email box. and. Okay. Yeah, a lot of those are red, especially the ones from Barry and red. <laughs> don't, so don't worry about that. <laughs> the unread bits. But you'll see the search. That's another popular thing. You want to make sure it follows the user. And we've already done a search index. Um, and that follows the user as well. And now we'll also show um, OneDrive because that was your, your, your other question. You know, could we uh, make OneDrive follow the user? So we would map another VHD and have it mount and steer off OneDrive to that. And that's what we've done here. And we've got several gigabytes of files that already look like they're synced to this non-persistent machine. But in this case, they're steered off to block level storage and that sync's already occurred. So it makes a very robust session. You see Profile Unity runs it log off and it'll capture those UEM changes, the mm -hmm. bookmark we did and a couple other things. But some of the other bits have already been at play there through Profile Disk and the Profile Disk will come in in the uh, Windows 10 session. Now you could go Windows 7 to 7, but we're showing the true power because we're running portability in here too. So and that is kind that, of the ability to go forward and also back. Right. So we're showing everything configured, the full power of what we can do. By the way, I didn't point it out, but there were some several Flex app applications on that last desktop. Foxit okay. Reader that we launched and we changed that setting in, which mm -hmm. was a UEM setting, but the actual application was brought in through our layering. So, so now we're all, wasn't on the underlying golden image. No, it was then layered on top of based upon the user's um, right. context of the user. 
Exactly. And this Windows 10 session is the same way. It's a non-persistent machine that's been set back or snapshot in this case for workstation back to nothing. VMware Workstation worked the same way. Uh, non-persistent Citrix desktop will work the same way. Profile Unity is bringing back the policies, the profile, and everything into this environment. Flex app now, see the applications that hit the desktop? Yep. They're snapped right in. Those are all coming in through application layering. So there's, a, I think there's about 15 applications all together. Some have shortcuts to the desktop and some don't. Is why there's more than the number of uh, icons there that you see. We'll launch uh, Foxit Reader and we'll show that um, the bit for the spell checker came across and that's an app data type setting, a, a, a portable profile. Mm -hmm. And that, that setting surely stuck there and it came across. And we show a couple other things. I believe the bookmark for um, the uh, internet has come across, even across different versions of Internet Explorer. Some people say, can you support Edge? But what happens is if you open up Internet Explorer first, Edge will naturally ask you if you want to populate it from what came across in your Internet sure. Explorer setting. So we support it that way. And we want to show the other bits uh, in here too, and that is how does our profile disk stand up when we assign the Office 365 bits to it? And in that case, we'll launch Outlook here. Now, truth in advertising, we have two profile disks, one for Windows 7 and one for Windows 10 in here. And the one that's been assigned for Windows 10 has been mounted for this environment. So portability works one way. It brings across all the user persistency, but a profile disk is by its nature tied to the OS. Sure. So in that case, it's, it's tied to the OS and OS specific. The beautiful thing about that is our portability will sync the two up. Okay. And there's the OneDrive bit that's already in sync, mm -hmm. the uh, indexing, and the over 100,000 messages that appear to be in here. Many of them, I think a month worth is actually synced in this profile. The indexing mm -hmm. already occurred. So it's very seamless to the end user once you have this set up, and it keeps them productive all, all the time. Definitely. So that's just that seamless user experience, really. It means the technology is transparent to the user at the end of the day. That's what we're trying to achieve with anything we're doing with end user computing, really. Um, right. so, so big ticks in those box, but also previously, as you showed us, very simple to manage from an end user perspective, that wizard kind of driven interface means that it's very easy to get up and running. Absolutely. Then those, those package wants applications, those were the same applications that, that we originally had packaged for windows seven that, that work in 10 and, Ask, your, ask yourself this if you're looking at layering technologies, really, for customers to ask, do you have a package once approach? Do applications work by their very nature across? And in our case, almost all do. You want to test them, make sure there's no prerequisites that weren't recognized in second OS, but 90-something percent of them will package once and come across like they did in the demonstration today. Fantastic. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for uh, spending the time with us today and doing those demonstrations. Um, really like the product and uh, urge anybody that's watching to, to get in touch if they'd like to see a demo specific to their environment. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I'm so glad you had this on. We've, we've been uh, anxious to get back uh, on with you to do a podcast and also a, a video demo. I'm glad we could sync both of them up in short order. If they want to learn more about us, of course, Liquidware is the site, liquidware.com. Um, you know, our partners like uh, Computer World in the UK know so much about us already and they can help you with next steps. But if you want to download a, a trial version, you can uh, go to the download section of our website. You can literally have this installed in an hour. If you want to set up the packaging console and start layering applications, we recommend dedicating a couple hours for that at a minimum. But it's surprisingly fast to get up and running, as you've seen with that guided configuration that we have in, in at play. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you so much for your time, Jason. Thanks, Barry. Cheers. Bye. Bye.